Let's create this cute little envelope notebook together. I have made this as a design team project for 49 dragonflies and I would like to show you how you can make such a cutie for yourself. In today's video you will learn how to make the base of this thing so that you have journaling pages here, a little journaling spot here that's hidden, some journaling pages on the back, some hidden journaling space here, and last but not least, some journaling cards that you can take out here. In today's video, you will learn how to make the base for this. And tomorrow, in the second part of this video, I will show you how to decorate this front and the back. And I will also give you a whole flip through of this thing here. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel Junk Journal Art. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today I would like to create another design team project for 49 dragonflies. And for this project I'm using her French floral backgrounds that you can see here. So I would like to show you the pages first and then I would like to tell you what I'm creating with this paper collection. So if you are interested in having this digital paper collection or something else from 49 Dragonflies shop, then please check out the info box. I have linked this special set for you down below and of course her shop as well. And um, I have a promo code for you so if you want to go shopping in her shop then you can save 10% with the promo code that's written down in the description box below this video. I really really love this paper collection it's so versatile and I've already used that for other projects I really like that and yeah it's my favorite colors so um, I thought I would like to use it again but in a totally different way than I have used it before I think we all know this problem that we have too many ordinary white envelopes so I have tons of these in my stash and sometimes I'm really bored to just coffee dye them or paint on them. It's yeah something like too boring for me. <laughs> so I thought about something that we could make out of envelopes that's really easy and hopefully a fun addition for a junk journal. Okay, so um, first of all, I think we have to talk a little bit about the different, I would say, shapes of the flips of those envelopes. I've mixed them up here a little bit, sorry. So I would say the normal envelope looks like this. It has a really big flip, as you can see, in this triangle shape. And that's also um, the kind of flip that we want to use or that we need for the project that I have planned for today. But there are also envelopes that have a little yeah, smaller, also some kind of a triangle shape, but a smaller flip, that would be not so good. And um, yeah, I have many of these in my stash that have this rectangle flap and that's totally not what I want. But I would like to try to turn such a flap, flip, how is that called? You know what I mean, this part of the envelope um, into something like this that looks like a triangle. So um, for this project, we are going to need two envelopes. So let me put these away and let me use this as a template. And then first of all, um, I would like to cut um, four of these triangles out of one of the pages. And I think I would like to use, where is my favorite page of this collection? Here it is. Um, how can we do that, that we get four out of one sheet? Is that possible? <laughs> Hopefully. Here's the middle. Yeah, I think if I fold that in half, then that could work. Let's see. 
Yep, that will work. I mean, it's a little bit... This part will be too short. So I think we will need two of the DNA4 sheets to um, manage that, but that's not the problem. So I will line this up here so that I see that uh, I will uh, just make the mark here to my envelope so that you can see it better. So this two um, things here, I mean, the beginning of the fold and the end of the fold, I line up with the edge of my paper here so that I can trace around now here. Uh, okay, when we have that, I think we could take the other piece that we want to use and just fold that in half and then just cut all four at once. Hopefully that will work. Otherwise I have to print that out again. <laughs> but I think that will work. So um, we have a straight edge here and a straight edge here and then these little uh, ends that the envelope has. So I can cut this with my cutting machine and this with my scissors and here I can use a corner rounder later. So I will just go to my cutting machine and just trim that down to this shape. Okay, so when we have this edge and this edge, we can just trim this and this and then I will use my uh, corner rounder, put that in here and we have hopefully now four pieces that have the same size and the same measurements. Yuppie, yay. <laughs> okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to bring um, two of those to this envelope and the other both to this envelope. And um, you have seen in the beginning that this is not exactly 100% the same size. As you can see here, this is a little bit strange. This is a little bit too long, but that's not the problem. We will glue that down and then just cut this white thing and the rest here so that everything looks the same. But now I have to think a little bit about that. Um, later on those both envelopes will go together like this so that one flip is here and the other is here so you have to decide um, what you want to see on the outside of this both envelopes and I would like to go with this green and with this more bluish grayish uh, color in the inside so I will take this for here and this one for the other piece. Okay, so let's glue that down. I think we can use a glue stick for gluing this. That will be strong enough and will, it will not be um, such a problem that the paper gets too wavy or something like that. But of course you can use that kind of glue that you like. You could also use a liquid glue, of course. Okay, so when I have glue here, I will line this edge up with this fold here of the envelope and I try to get the middle so that this piece is exactly in the middle of this envelope. Press that down. Check if you can still close it. That works really well. Okay. And let's do that on the other one as well before we go on with the next steps. And perhaps it's a good idea now to take this and put that exactly on top of the other envelope. So if this on the first one is not exactly in the middle, um, you can now line this up with the piece below so that you can make sure that this is in the exact same position as on the other envelope. <clears throat> so, that way you don't have to care about two millimeters or something like that um, if it's not totally the same. This way you will get it really exactly on top of each other. 
uh, later when we glue everything together. And now we are going to glue the other piece to the inside here, exactly on top of the other one. Hopefully that will work. That should be the same size. <laughs> no? Yes, it is, of course. Okay, so let's just glue that down. Okay, so now we have to follow this little thing here that we've made before. So I will just cut this white thing here that is picking out from the original envelope. <clears throat> and then I think we can just close that so that we can see here how much is picking out so that we can just cut that here with the the edge of the envelope so that should be a good solution to have that the same on both sides and now we have a really simple bigger flip on our both envelopes <laughs> okay so let's cut that off here as well and now um i think now we will first decorate um this area that's behind the flip so because i want to have a really nice background here and i'm doing that before i'm distressing this whole thing and now i'm opening the uh, the envelope and then I'm just eyeballing that Got this here And then Here So let's glue that down And here on the other one as well. Okay, so now um, I think we can distress the edges of this, of these both envelopes. What shall we use for that? I would like to have this a little bit grungy, <laughs> even if it looks not crunchy at all at the moment. I think I would yeah, like to use my Walnut Stain Distress Excite ink for this. And I will just go around these both envelopes. Okay, and here in the edges, I think uh, we could try to spritz a tiny bit of water to get this oxide reaction a little bit more but i need first i need a dry paper towel in my hands before i can do that so let's see okay so um the walnut stain distress oxide ink reacts some kind of bluish grayish when you spritz water and activate this oxide effect and hopefully my camera can catch that here i got exactly this color this is such a grayish green uh, not green 
It's bluish grayish and it fits really well to these little ornaments that Barbara has in her paper. I really love this combination and I think that looks really, really cool. Okay, so um, this can dry now. And while this is drying, I would like to prepare some pages. So I will take the pages from Barbara's printable and some um, tea dyed paper. So um, first of all, I would like to see how big those pages can be. I think we could just fold this DNA4 paper in half. So if we will fold that in half like this as well, let's see what happens if we put that around here, if that is a good size as well. Yep, I think so. And I think it's interesting when this is not the full length here. I think that that looks really, really cool. But of course, we can also vary the the length or the height of these pages. Um, so I will just cut some more. So, um, I mean, this is not... These are not pages uh, at all. I mean, this is just a paper that I have folded in half, but I will show you what I do now. So I take this whole piece, put it here to my cutting machine, and I will just cut this white border here. And here I'm also cutting a little bit to get this open. I will show you that in a second, what I mean. And here. So now here we have the closed part of this folded page. And when I open this now, I should have two single pages, as you can see. And that's the goal. We want to have more of these, so I will make some more. Okay, so when we have cut that, of course, some of the pages are in the different direction. So you have to bring them back so that, for example, butterflies or something like that are not in the wrong direction. I'm just thinking if... I think this is... Uh, Barbara? <laughs> this is like this. Yeah, okay. And then I have my tea dyed paper here. And now I'm just making something like a really simple signature out of these papers. And... Now the big question is how many of these papers um, will I need for this? I don't know. I really don't know. So let's see. I want to have Barbara's beautiful papers in here. So perhaps we should not use too much of the tea dyed paper. But I really like that it, there's one tea dyed page and then one of Barbara's pages. One tea dyed page and so on. That looks I think really cool. So let's try what happens if we use all of them. Let's see. We can try that out and if that is too thick we can still um, take some of the pages out. And I'm not so happy with this purple. <laughs> can you see the here, this purple? I'm not so happy with that. So perhaps we can leave this little thing there because this purple is the only purple that we will have in this journal or in this little notebook. It's not a journal, but yeah, mini journalchen. <laughs> in German it would be mini journalchen, tiny, mini, tiny, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so to check how thick this will be, we are going to take this envelope like, like this. We have the white side here. And then we take this envelope like this and we put it together so that we have something like this. That will make uh, make sense in a second. Then we take the both flaps like this and we will just take our signature. Here's the middle and put that here like this and put the flaps back to where they were before. And that way we could see, hopefully, <laughs> I'm not uh, sure if this will really work like I want it, but I think so, yeah. So now you can feel how thick this whole thing is. 
and you can decide is that too much for me or is that okay i think we should grunge up those pages a little bit before we put everything together um, and i'm just thinking about a really easy and fast way to do that hmm <laughs> yeah can we perhaps mm, just crumble this up a little bit perhaps here not too much but here a little bit more because when this later on is here then we don't want to have this too grungy but here on the bottom i think we can also tear this a little bit like this and i will do that on the outer pages a little bit more and here doesn't matter and here on the other side as well on the bottom a little bit more and on the outer pages a little bit more than on the ones that are more in the inside so let's just do it like this only a little bit here on top and then we will take the distress oxide walnut stain again to get the same distressing on these pages as we have on the envelopes I'm just realizing in today's design team project I haven't teared any of Barbara's pages <laughs> until now uh -huh. <laughs> so let's see <laughs> I will try to get a little bit more ink here so that this looks like it is really old and perhaps we could also um, mix this walnut stain with something else so that this gets not too matchy matchy <sighs> but with what um i mean when we spritz water here this will turn into something like this bluish grayish color like here what would match some kind of an orange i think <clears throat> um let's see fossilized amber is too yellow i think what about wild honey yep i think we will try that i mean orange and green that would go really well together let's see so i will just go over this here really randomly to get a mixture out of these both colors and of course you can also play on the inside of this little signature here with those colors i would like ooh, i would like to see how this turns out first and then um, i will go to the inner pages and i also can um, do something with the inner pages when I have put everything together so now I will leave this like it is and then just spritz some water to let this react that's really yellow Oops, okay that's really yellow and I think when we dry this here I mean that looks really cool but it's really yellow um, what happens if we dry that then we perhaps can't change that yellow um, rusty hinge is really orange as well I can't put that directly to this wet thing because I would ruin my ink pad but of course there's a solution we can just take um, an acrylic block apply the ink to the acrylic block and since this is already really wet I can I think whoo, whoo, that's much just go 
over this like this. Hopefully that, oh my, oh my goodness. <laughs> That's really orange now. I haven't planned that that gets so orange, but let's see how that looks when it's dry. I will just take my heat gun and dry that. And I really like to whoop, distress some kind of a, yeah, something like a signature like this is um, in, in this way. How can I say that when everything is folded and is together, because now when I'm drying that here on the edges where the paper is on top of each other, that can get really interesting effects later. I think you can guess what I mean when I do it like this. You can see um, that this looks really interesting and um, it's really wet and that's a cool thing because we can get really really cool effects in the end when this is all together. It soaks a little bit from one to the other page and that's really really cool. So let's dry that. Okay so when this is dry it looks like this and I'm a little bit surprised. <laughs> This is not so orange like I have expected. Um, I think that was a good choice with this um, rusty hinge and wild honey and walnut stain. When you flip that, you can see that this is really different. I mean, this orange here is really extremely. I really like that. Here we have this um, bluish, grayish color of the walnut stain again. And also the pages that were tea dyed before get a really, really interesting look. And I really like the oxide ink on matte photo paper. Here you can see that really extremely. The colors get more vibrant on the Pay, um, on the side of the photo paper that has this surface to print a photo on. The other side of the photo paper is a little bit different and there this effect, I mean here is not so much of the ink, but the effect is not so vibrant like on this side of the paper. And the more we come to the other side, I mean here to the back of this little signature, um, the more you can see that here is nearly nothing. That's because we have spritzed the water only from the one side until now. So, of course, we will do that from the other side as well. And now we can also take our pages and make them a little bit like this. Like you would hold some playing cards. Do you know what I mean? Like this. And then... Here we have the walnut stain already, but we can put a little bit more here, I think. And <clears throat> then let's take a little bit wild honey again here on this side as well. And by the way, if you have some other ink on your ink pad you can just take a dry paper towel and rub that off so that you don't mix up your colors on the ink pad itself okay, so let's do it like this and then we leave it like this spritz some water again and i try to get it really really wet so that it can soak again to the other pages and of course you could also move that around a little bit if you wish and um, the longer you wait now before you start drying of course the more extreme this effect in the inside would be because now the paper has time to soak up the ink and the longer you wait um, the more you will get of this oxide effect in the inside of your little signature here. So I will wait a little bit and then I will dry this again. Okay, so this is completely dry now and, and as you can see you have a really cool variety of different colors that are cohesive at the same time and I really like that. So this shall be sewn here later so that we can 
open this like a little notebook and this is the closure for the one side here and this is the closure for the other side here okay how to get the pages here to the envelopes and how to get the envelopes together so that this is together i mean you know <laughs> so first of all we have to um attach the envelopes to each other so i will hold that in place like it will be later and then i will open this um so that i can attach the envelopes here to each other so that means i leave a little little gap here in between of the both envelopes that's about i would say two millimeters so that this is a mini spine and that it can be closed easily later um, and now I will take some tape you could also use some fabric or something like that and put a little strip here to the inside to make that whole thing a little bit more sturdy here so I think let's see I think that's enough. I'm just thinking if I want to put hmm, an, a fabric as well, but yeah, let's do that. So let's put, let's just put a piece of fabric here as well so that I can make sure that it will not fall apart. Okay, I think that's better. And when we have that, um, when we have this here later, I'm planning to um, turn this into a little pocket. So that means I will, when this is, when the signature is sewn, um, I will glue that here and on the bottom, only the envelopes, of course. And this whole thing will be something like this so that you can put something here inside. Here I still can see the white of this, um, inside of the envelope you could glue some book pages you could glue some of the leftovers of the printable or you can just take some distress ink and distress this area here and you can also smear that to your table because you forgot to put your protection paper underneath <laughs> That don't have to be much because you will only see a little bit of this later when you look inside from the top and then we will <coughs> need a thread of course to sew that in and um, this thread will be visible here on the outside so um, let's choose a color that matches the whole project. Whoa, no. <laughs> Some orange perhaps. Ooh, that's really orange. Very orange, but what about, Whoa, oh my goodness. Yep, that's perfect. Okay, so um, I want to have this sturdy on the outside as well. So I think we are going to put a little piece of fabric here as well. Um, and also to make this a little bit more interesting and yeah, beautiful. Okay, so here we go. Put that back here like this bring everything into the right position and then put it back to the envelopes that means i am taking again here the middle making this like this and then put that here so that i have approximately 
the middle of of the envelope so here it's the same distance as on the bottom okay so when we have that hold it like this and then just take some paper clips and bring that together so that this can't move anymore Ooh, what's that? Okay, so now we have that. Then we can open that and check if everything is really nice together here, but I think so. Okay, so then we can take our thread. And then we can take an awl and make three holes. I will open this here and now I'm eyeballing that. One hole goes into the middle and goes out there hopefully. <laughs> and one here on the top. Can you see that? Approximately here. And now I'm eyeballing the third hole so that I have the same distance from the top to the hole and in between of these both holes. But that's, yeah, you know, <laughs> you can measure that. But I think <clears throat> for such a little project, it's not so important. Now we take the needle and we go inside of this middle hole to the outside. back to the inside on the top hole then we go to we leave this little thing here and then we go to the bottom hole to the outside and back to the inside here in this middle hole and then it's really important that you have the thread on the one side this middle thread goes here and the thread that you take out here is on the other side so as you can see now this one thread is here this is this middle one and the other one is here on the other side so that you now can take this and make a knot here Let's see how that looks on the outside. Yeah, everything is okay here. And I like to make two or three knots so that everything is really secure. And now you can decide if you want to leave that as long as it is. And if you want to let it hang here so that you are able to um, put some dangle or something like that here. So I don't know until now if I want to do that so I will just cut it like this so that I still have the chance to hang something here and now we can take our paper clips off and then I want to put some glue here and here on the bottom and then I will glue that so that we have something like a top loaded pocket in the end and to make that not too strange and to be sure that the things that I put inside here can't hurt my thread I will put some glue here as well so that this area can't be touched by anything that I will put into the the pocket later then I will carefully close that Make sure that your thread is there where it should be here on the very outside line the edges up and glue, Ooh. <laughs> glue that together sorry <laughs> okay so i think we could just do it like this and put some paper clips here until the glue is really dry Okay, so when this is completely dry, we can take off the paper clips and as you can see, this whole thing works. 
<laughs> I really like that. And now we can fill this um, little pocket here. For that, I have prepared these three papers here. That's just a scrapbooking paper, white on the back side, so that I have the chance to journal here. We could spritz that with some coffee, or we could put some Distress um, Oxide ink uh, on there. I will not decide that now. I will just put them in here so that I can decide that while I'm journaling on these um, little cards here. And I've just taken them, put them in here so that they are invisible when I put them here. But now it's, of course, really hard to get them out when they are in there. So I would like to take some pieces of this material here and made, make some tabs so that I can take these cards out really easily. So we will need three of these. I'm just eyeballing that and then I'm taking my stapler. <clears throat> and now for the first card, I'm stapling this here on the left side. Okay, so then whoo, when we have that, we can put that in here so that this first little tab is here. Um, the card is now on the very left, so it can't go more to the left because of the gluing and this fabric thing inside. And then I can just take the second card, put that perhaps here so that I can see where my tab has to go. And I think I can put that Ooh, I can't take it out now <laughs> here to the left as well because the card is a little bit shorter than the other one not so wide I mean okay, so let's just do that and when I now put that in here the second tab is directly next to the first one I really like that um, and especially because it matches this fabric that we have here and it's yeah it's handy and it looks I think really nice but we will make a third one as you can see you can put much in here I think when I look at this I can put that to the very right of this card but you have to yeah I would say always eyeball that or make that um, fit to your size of card. I mean, you could also put three cards that have the same width into this little thing and then make the tabs on the places in the places where you want them. Um, I like to do that step by step and card by card because that's easier for me. But of course you can do that like it's working for you and now we have this okay so when we have that <clears throat> of course we need something that we can put inside of the envelopes themselves and i have this paper left over here that was this paper with those um purple flowers that i liked not so much for this project because they are so yeah Here's no other purple, but perhaps we can take that and make something like a journaling card for this envelope. So this fits in here perfectly. And I think we can just take some of our tea dyed paper and glue that down so that we have the possibility to journal on the back side and the purple will disappear. Sorry, Barbara. <laughs> but I really like to have this tea dyed color of the paper on this card again, because I have that in this little booklet there as well. And I will decide later what I want to do with this. I mean, this is really simple, I know. But sometimes I also need those simple things without, you know, structure paste, stenciling and that stuff. So we can put that in here, go in there like this. 
and i think for the other envelope we can just take this because here is no purple i mean we can use that as it is and we could later on make a journaling card out of that making some collage or writing here or whatever so let's put that into the other envelope here and it would be good if this would be a little bit thicker paper but i think it's okay you can take it in and out I think that's okay. Uh, okay, so now we have that. And now I'm thinking about um, some kind of a closure. One possibility to close that would be to put an eyelet here and another eyelet here and then just take a thread and close it here so that you have a little bow or something like that here. And that's exactly what I want to do. But I would also like to show you some closure um, if you perhaps don't have a tool to set an eyelet or if you don't like this eyelet idea. So of course you could also <clears throat> take a paper clip I have put this little charm here on the end so that it looks a little bit more interesting. And then you, of course, could simply close this whole thing by putting, oopsala, <laughs> putting the paper clip, not so easy as I thought, here like this. And this would be closed. So in this case, I think um, instead of putting the charm here, it would make sense to put it here to the bottom of this thing. I think it would be necessary to put a um, jump ring in between of the paper clip and the charm so that the charm can hang flat. But I think you got the idea. I think that would look really, really cute. And perhaps we could also do that additionally after we have put um, the eyelet here. So um, if we want to do that, I think it's a good idea to choose a golden eyelet um, to put that there. So we need two, one for the for this side and one for the other side. And I'm just thinking, shall we put something here to make this a little bit more sturdy? I think that has a good size and this also would look <laughs> some kind of cute I think I think we will put it like this to the inside so I'm trying to get four circles out of this material hopefully that will work who I'm a lucky girl today <laughs> you can just put that here <laughs> then we can just take the both flips like this and make the hole oh my goodness can't see anything okay now we have that then we put the eyelet in here and close it okay I think that worked really well I'm a little bit surprised <laughs> hopefully this on the other side works as well I'm knocking on wood that this will work don't laugh otherwise it will not work sometimes I'm getting ovals from my yeah as you can see here this is yeah not perfect but I think it's okay for me okay so now uh, what shall we use here I think a little bit wider ribbon or something like a sari silk would work really well so I will do it like this and put one of these things here. Oh, that 
looks cool that looks really cool and the other one here and perhaps I should have measured that before I Whoa, what's that oh I think look at this <laughs> that was already cut here and it has the same length by accident what a cool thing I love those I love those happy accidents okay so let's put that through here I want to have this the same length okay and with this little circle here it feels really sturdy here this is really really sturdy now I like that okay so now we can take that and make a little knot or a bow I don't like bows because of that I'm making only a knot but of course you can do that like you want it and then we have this like this and now I have a personal problem <laughs> because since I have made this really sturdy so that it can't be destroyed I have a problem with this edge here but I can solve the problem really easy I mean when I close this and I make my knot here the pages are a little bit shorter so they will not be touched by this knot but if I make the knot too strong it could happen that this edge of the envelope can get some damages and I don't want that so I want to make this area there a little bit more sturdy and for that I'm using the rest of this thing and I think that should be no problem to just take this and perhaps put a little piece that doesn't have to be much um, a little piece of this here <coughs> to um, be a little protection for the the edge of this envelope and now when we have that and when we now close it the knot of the sari silk will go on top of this fabric and it will not destroy the edge of the envelope because it's sturdy there as well as you can see and you can also feel it that it's yeah way more sturdy than before and I think that's also a nice addition to this area Mm, okay, so what else can we do if we want to add this paper clip additionally, as I said in the beginning, or not in the beginning, a few minutes ago, we could put that here. Um, but no matter where we want to put it, we will need a jump ring in between of these both elements. And when we now put that to the paper clip, then this little charm lays flat and we have only the bulk of this jump ring. But that's not so much as when this um, whole charm would stand in the air. Okay, so we could do it like that and we could put another one to the other side so that this hangs on this side and the other one hangs on the other side I'm just wondering if I have a moon because this is a sun or a star or something like that a moon or a star I'm just searching for something like that okay so here we go I have found this little cute star it's not 100% the same style of this uh, like this sun it's not 100% the same color but I think when this is on the one side and the other one is on the other side, that doesn't matter. And yeah, it's some kind of a junk notebook. I mean, <laughs> don't care about that. So just attach the ring, bring it back together. And then we have to bring this. Uh, I mean, this is the same from both sides but this knot this has a pattern on the one side and nothing on the other side so I have to yeah 
do it like this so that this is yeah I, I show you in a second so then we can just bring that here and this way the little sun is hanging here and the star is that the right direction, Louisa? Yes. The star is hanging here on the other side. And I think that looks that looks cool. I mean, you could also take this. I mean, this little notebook has two sides, hasn't it? I mean, it's on this side where you can write. And it's on this side where you could, can write. And you could also use this for... I mean, sun is for me something like during the day. You could make a diary here for daydreams or something like that and here you could perhaps write your dreams that you had at night or oh, i'm sorry about those noises my hubby is um on my construction site out there we are building a part of my tiny house new and sorry about those noises i can't do anything against that we have so less time he has to do that now and i have to record this video sorry um uh, you could also use this little thing with your partner and perhaps you could uh, choose a charm uh, that yeah says hubby and me or whatever and I could write here and he could write here. You could also hide some um, secret messages or something like that inside of the envelopes and you could put that perhaps to your breakfast breakfast desk and um, have something to explore every morning or something like that that just came to my mind um, and I think yeah that's a cool idea isn't it <laughs> I think it's a cool idea